sewing machines, talk to us about workers' rights. And uh, this is a session where uh, some of my best friends are speaking and I am really honoured to be moderating this and therefore you will see very little of me and more of them. Um, we are having simultaneous translation for we from Empower and uh, so this is going to take a little more time than the 10 minute presentation. Uh, and then we have Laura who is my hero. She, I, I mean I envy her skills, I envy her pen, I envy everything about her. But she is the naked anthropologist Laura Agasti who will then speak and then we have a small a film made by the media director of uh, APNSW, Dale, get up and say Yoo! <laughs> and uh, which is, he's put together clips about real raids and how they look in the real world. And uh, so I would like to start with Ree, who uh, from Empower. Uh, Liz uh, is, going to, is also from Empower and she's going to be translating. Uh, we will speak in Thai. Hello, I'm Wee. Uh, my name is Sashmi Kanyur, but actually everybody calls me Wee, and I prefer that because that's the name I'm known by my family and my friends. If you say Sashmi, nobody will know who you're talking about. We is fine. Uh, I'm a sex worker, that's my main job, and then my hobby is um, sex worker activism with Empower, or my small job. Um, so I've taken time out and I've come here for what we call in Thailand the short time and long time. So she's come short time to talk with you today. So it's very exciting for me to be all the way over um, this way in the world, in Europe and Asia. I haven't been here before. And I just have been trying to think all the time, what exactly can I say to help people understand and accept me and what I do and all the other sex workers in the world at the same time. And in Thailand, when, as a sex worker, we're not under labor law, so the employer will cut your salary when you miss a day. So I'm missing many days of my work this month, but it's more than made up for coming and speaking here and meeting with many different women from many different occupations and many different varieties from around the world. And when I get here and I look at all the, everybody's faces, I feel like we're more like a family than strangers, really. And I'm thinking that when I go back, I must thank all my customers for contributing their money for me to come. <laughs> in fact, nobody in the world knows that when the first man paid somebody to cook his dinner, or sew his shirt, or wash his pants, or clean his house, or do give uh, sexual pressure, nobody knows who's the first one to pay, or who was the first one to sell. We don't know who, who they were. All we know is that uh, the selling and buying of, of different services has been going on for thousands and thousands of years and that each uh, service is developed, has developed into an occupation or into work. So it's developed into chefs and tailors and fashion world and sex workers. Um, many professions have developed. One thing that stands out for sex work though is that sex work has developed and the sex industry has developed without any assistance from government, without support from society or any political will to see development of the industry. And I can only think that had there been some political will and if we all came together and actually supported the development and improvements in sex work, how far and fast we could be. And it should feel bad because the development is never tied to human rights. The development in the sex industry is not tied to the development and the access of serving our human rights. Recently, since uh, 2000, about the year 2001, there has been a new threat that's holding up the development and access of human rights, and that is the um, raid and rescue strategy to deal with anti-trafficking work. And in the past 12 months, uh, about 200 women have joined together to produce a research project of Empower, um, hit and run on the impact of anti-trafficking strategies, law and policy on the human rights of sex workers. So of the 200, some women have done interviews, some women write, some women have danced, some women have sewn a tapestry, and some have made a film. The other thing that is very, 
you will read about the bad impact and you'll hear a lot about the bad impact. So we also want to talk about the resistance from our rescued sex workers as well because they're not only not victims of trafficking, but they're reputed to be victims of the early trafficking. So we're talking about a friend in last February who was arrested as a trafficked woman. Um, and she told her age is 20 and she was doubted. And so when your age is doubted, or they don't believe your age, they'll examine your teeth and do a bone x-ray to try and tell how old you are. Mm -hmm. So she undergoed those examinations and those examinations said she was 60. Our friend of mine, she is an undocumented migrant sex worker from Burma who has been through a frightening raid and arrested and has been detained and then she has to go before the court. And we were so impressed because in the court, of course she speaks Burmese, so she had to have a translator. And in the court she stood up and she called out to the judge. It was very sweet. She called out, hey dude, or like, mate, mate, the translator, you, it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, she was sentenced to be detained in the social welfare shelter. They call it help, but it's actually de detention. Um, there are many of them have been built under the anti-trafficking <coughs> money and under new anti-trafficking law in Thailand. In part of the shelter, they are uh, obliged to undertake vocational training, which, as we all know, will be sewing. <laughs> and once again, Dog Mai caused a problem because not only did she refuse to take part, but everyone else joined her, and it was the first strike. <laughs> Um, rescue <laughs> in the rehabilitation center. And her reasoning was that she could sew since she was nine years old. She didn't need to be taught. So that raid happened in February last year. Um, Dog Mai is now released, but there's another five women still in detention. Um, and Dog Mai is looking now at taking legal action. She's just waiting for her friends to come out. One of those women, we are just adding that one of those women has actually given birth in the detention centre and five of them, including her, were not classified as traffic women. They were not charged with any crime. They have been held now for 14 months as witnesses. We are saying that in our report, we'd like everybody to have access to knowing about the impacts and also hearing about um, how smart and sweet and strong and sexy her friends are to fight back. <laughs> well, we thank you all for um, giving her the time and space to listening today. We can tell you to be to do the And we also have a little something else to show you about how the uh, sex workers in Thailand uh, fight back a little bit against the anti-trafficking strategy and policy. Just a moment. No, let me show you the